Since the 9-11 attacks, the number of self-described hate organizations has increased 69% in our country to more than 1,000 groups nationwide. Many of their sympathizers keep in touch through stormfront.org. It's the Internet's first major site and still one of the most popular. The Sikh shooter Wade Michael Page, for example, posted on this site, which was founded by our guest Don Black, the former Grand Wizard of the KKK, who joins us tonight from Boynton Beach, Florida. Mr. Black, uh, welcome. I wonder if you are proud of the, uh, the connection between Mr. Page and your website. Well, of course not, uh, and we're not a hate group any more than Hispanic or black or Jewish organizations promoting their interests, their values, their culture, uh, their heritage. They're not considered hate groups, but because we promote ours, because we want to see a future for our people, for our children, our great-grandchildren, uh, because we believe we're being subject to genocide through assimilation by bringing into this country and European countries tens of millions of third world immigrants uh, who ultimately are transforming our nation into a third world nation. Because we believe this, because we're fighting this, we're called a hate organization. And of course, we had nothing to do with the shooter in Wisconsin. Well, wait a second, uh, Mr. Black, what do you think of Sikhs generally, Sikhs in our country? Well, we oppose all third world immigration. We have nothing against Sikhs or any other third world peoples in their own country. Uh, we think Sikhs uh, belong in Punjab, in India. Uh, they have a, uh, they've been persecuted in India in the past, but right now they hold high positions in government. So you want them to go back to, back to India, essentially? Exactly. We believe we have the right to maintain our countries as white nations, just as India has the right, Punjab has the right uh, to maintain its country as Indian and Mr. Sikh Mr. Black, or whatever. You know, Africa you know has the Page? same right. Did you know Michael Wade Page? No, nobody I know has ever even heard of Page. I'm, I'm apparently had some association with some uh, skinhead bands. He posted on Stormfront a total of seven times in four years, and each post was just promoting well, let, his let band. Let me ask you, That's Mr. Black, all. was your former group, the KKK, when you were Grand Wizard, was that a hate group? No, it was not. The KKK wasn't a hate own. group either. No, no, no. The hate, this, this term hate is a, a term uh, which had nothing to do with one's political or racial views prior to the 50s and, and, and 60s. You, you don't when think, uh, Mr. Black, you don't think that the attitudes you just expressed might generate the kind of hatred that could lead to the violence perpetrated by people like Mr. Page? I think Mr. Page, I don't know his motives, actually. I think he, from what I gather, he wanted to commit suicide and take a few people with him. He certainly wasn't helping us. He wasn't helping our cause okay. by going into a temple and shooting up. Okay. Uh, Mr. Black, you stand by. I got you, I got you loud and clear. I'm going to come back to you. Uh, our next guest, Commander Jeff Scoop, is a commander of the neo-Nazi group called the National Socialist Movement, which he says rejects the label hate group as well. Uh, why, uh, Mr. Scoop, why reject it? Why not embrace it? Well, we're not a self-described hate group as uh, what you had said there. Basically, we're a white civil rights organization. Nobody in our movement or in our cause refers to it as a hate group. If When you stand up for white interests and white people, the mainstream media automatically labels it as hate. There's nothing hateful about standing up for your people, your rights. Why can't you embrace America as a melting pot? This country was founded by white Americans, for white Americans, and our concern is as white Americans, white civil rights, the concerns of white people in this country, and really the other races and the other people are not something that we're concerned with. Not at, not at all, even if they get killed like the Sikhs were killed in Wisconsin. Uh, you're putting words in my mouth. I did not say that. I'm saying that it's a tragedy anytime there's a loss of human life in this country, but we do not believe that those people should be here in this country. We believe this is a country that our forefathers founded, fought, and died for, and uh, we're standing here today just as gotcha. our forefathers gotcha. did There's in plenty, defense of our country. For the, for the record, there are plenty of black Americans, plenty of brown Americans, yellow Americans, red Americans who have also died for their country, uh, Commander Scoop. But uh, I'm going to come back to you as well. Satpal Singh is the chairman of the World Sikh Council, which is dealing with the melancholy fact that Sikhs are often confused for Muslims. Needless to say, they should not be targeted either, uh, but the Sikhs have this, uh, this burden of looking 
working differently enough that they can be singled out as they were singled out in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. First of all, uh, Mr. Singh, you know you have the condolences, our sincere condolences for the victims. How about this, uh, this awful phenomenon, though, of mistaken identity and people like this page being not only evil but stupid and targeting Sikhs? Thank you very much uh, for your condolences, and I also must thank uh, all the various faith groups and other communities that have come uh, with condolences. The hate that uh, provoked him to do something like this, we wish to convey to all Americans among us, uh, ourselves among them, that it's love and compassion for everybody. That's what the six scriptures teach us, that we should embrace and we would continue promoting love, compassion, and harmony among all people. Then how do you react, Mr. Singh, when you hear the previous guests talking about white supremacy and the need to have all people of color, people who are different, expelled from the country? I have seen countries that embrace diversity and countries that despise diversity and if you look at the history, most countries that have embraced diversity have done much better than those that despise it. Sikhs have contributed greatly to this country's uh, happiness and progress. And that's, I think, what stands in our mind as a model for a great nation. Our Constitution says that, uh, our Constitution and the preamble says very clearly that it's a self-evident truth that everybody is born equal. Gentlemen, if you'd all stand by, coming up, we'll explore the underworld of white supremacist music, the lyrics of many of these songs, folks, so vile they can't be repeated on the air. Plus, at the bottom of the hour, we'll have the latest on presidential politics. Frank Luntz will be here to explain how the selection of Paul Ryan has energized the GOP base. But has he also made it smaller? That question at the bottom of the hour. supremacist music like the kind played by Wade Michael Page, the Wisconsin shooters, now one of the hate mongers most effective recruiting tools along with the internet uh, that we spoke of earlier. How does it work, this music? Let's ask T.J. Leiden, who's in Vegas tonight, a former neo-Nazi. T.J. is the reformed author of Skinhead Confessions. T.J., welcome. Before we get to the music, you heard uh, former Grand Wizard uh, Don Black, uh, you heard his comments, and you heard uh, Commander Jeff Scoop's comments that uh, they reject violence. Do you buy their, uh, their proclamations of innocence? I, I don't buy it at all. I think it's basically a bunch of BS. You know, they talk about this country was founded by white people for white people. Uh, there were people already here when white Europeans came here. So I guess if we're all supposed to go back to our own countries, I guess we'll have to go back to you know Ireland, England, France, and Germany and leave it back to the Native Americans. But it's not about that. What it's about for them is the superiority of the white race. And if whites conquered this country and killed hundreds of thousands of Native Americans, that's fine, because everything is justifiable. Everything whites do is perfect. Everything everybody else does is a negative. All right, what about the music? What about uh, Page and the affiliation with this white supremacist music? I mean, how big is it? And, uh, you know, how does it work? Tell me about Hammerfest, for example. Well, Hammerfest is a, is a concert that they throw you know, at different parts of the country at different times. And what it does is it brings people from all over the country. And it's a way of, it's like a rallying cry. It gets people pumped up. You know, they listen to this music. They're all hanging out together. The music's talking about violence, murder, genocide, everything you can imagine. So they're all pumped up. So when they leave that, they're really hoping as they drive away the first African-American they come across or Hispanic or Asian or, you know, somebody who's gay or lesbian, they're hoping that, hey, there's going to be an attack. If I gave you... Uh, something to read. You may read it once or twice. But if I gave you a CD and you listen to it multiple times and that song got stuck in your head, you may walk down the street one day and that song just clicks into your head. Everybody, I guarantee you this, but watching your show right now, Geraldo, has had that happen to them in their life. And if that message is talking about hate, violence, the overthrow of the United States government, that's a message that, sadly, you can't pay for. Commander Scoop, how do you respond to what TJ just said about your real motives? 
Well, as far as T.J. Lydon is concerned, I mean, everything about the man, he's a, he's a hypocrite. He basically posed as a as a racialist, and then he comes back out and he flips to the other side to make a buck. He's making a very good living off of what he's doing as being a hypocrite, writing books, going around and speaking, and doing these sorts of things. So basically, I don't think he has any uh, anything viable to say whatsoever. All right, all right, let him respond. TJ, TJ, you respond. Oh, that, that's that's amazing. That I, I'm making tons and tons of money. Uh, I rent I rent a home. Uh, I work a second job. Wow, I, I mean, Jeff Jeff must uh, be having me followed or something. He must know more about me than I do in my own life. It's amazing. All right, but what about the main, uh, TJ, what about the main theme here? Are these people dangerous? They all are dangerous in different ways. You know, Jeff is sitting there saying that, you know, they're not about hate and violence, but yet they embrace the swastika. The swastika, a symbol of the, uh, Nazi Germany that killed 12 million innocent people and caused thousands upon, actually millions and millions of American soldiers' lives. But yet he embraces that. Okay, TJ, thanks. Hold on, everybody. Up next, these uh, skinhead and neo-Nazi groups are full of sound and fury. But do they really, to ask uh, that question again, represent a threat to national security? We'll ask the experts after this. location of your emergency. Yes, ma'am. I need Okay. Keep a breath. Where can I send the help? Okay. Okay. We've got help on the way, okay? I think Oak Creek and Fort Hood, those massacres were two sides of the same hateful coin. But let's get specific. Remembering that uh, Major Hassan, Tim McVeigh, uh, this Page uh, character, and other racist killers came from the United States military, is there something going on in the military, in the Army specifically, that breeds hate mongers? Let's bring on counterterrorism analyst J.M. Berger, who's in Boston tonight. Uh, J.M., we know about the presence of uh, the gangbangers and their sympathizers in the military. What is it uh, with the white supremacists? Well, the thing you have to remember about military members is that the, because they have training in weapons, they're going to be much more effective in sort of extremist and terrorist circles. And there's a lot of respect for military members in those circles. So those guys are going to rise to the top. They're going to be more effective. They're more able to carry out a plan. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a massive problem in the military. It means that the veterans who end up in these kinds of movements are, are often much more dangerous than the average recruit. So what is the plan? What's it all about, really, realistically? They're not going to get rid of minorities in the country. What the hell are they doing? Well, they have a, a vision of a kind of apocalyptic uh, scenario in which the government is provoked into a massive crackdown against their movement that will then mobilize more and more people to rise up. So, in the way you know, that McVeigh came out of Waco, uh, you know, he was inspired by Waco, provoked by Waco? Yeah, similar to that. I mean, McVeigh thought that he was firing the first shot of this kind of revolution, and instead what happened was that everybody kind of crawled back into their holes and didn't want to... They were horrified by what he had done, the killing of children, and they were afraid of being arrested, and so they didn't act. But the, the mythology continues. And what about now, now that 9-11 is some years behind us? Will these militias, will the neo-Nazis rear their ugly heads? Well, they've been uh, around all along. I mean, this movement never completely went away. What we've seen from the pre-9-11 era to today is that it's become much more splintered. So in the 90s, there were anti-government movements that were not necessarily fundamentally racist, and they were loosely aligned with ideological racist groups. Since then, the, the non-government guys have kind of gone their own way and, and stepped away from racism. And then the racist movements themselves have become splintered and the groups have been under siege from various directions. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a weaker movement now, but we still worry about these individuals who might act out. Uh, Don Black, do you worry that your, uh, your writing or the people you uh, publish might provoke more violence? People who come to Stormfront and actually become involved in our community, our online community and in local communities, uh, which did not include this uh, guy, Page. He posted a few times promoting his band. But people that become involved feel a sense of community, a sense of direction. They are the least likely to go off 
and snap and start shooting up somebody. Okay, hold uh, it, we hold want it to there. Build. JM, I give you a last thought. Uh, well, Kevin Harpin, who uh, tried to blow up a Martin Luther King Day parade last year, was a Stormfront poster, and he credited Stormfront for educating him about race. If you go to Stormfront and pick any 10 for threads at random, there might be one thread celebrating white culture and positive values against nine that are about non-whites, negative, negative and hateful statements about non-whites. So the statement that Stormfront's not a hate site is absurd on the face of it. I got I have to leave it there. The discussion obviously will continue. J.M. Berger, thank you. T.J. Lydon, thank you. Don Black, Commander Jeff Scoop, and uh, Mr. Singh, thank you.